Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is the fifth lecture of our series, Motives in Algebra Geometry. Today, we have Professor Kapil with us. He'll be talking about Nori motives. Um, so let's get started. Over to you. Now, uh, in order to make this work, what this means is that given a triple x, y, i. So this represents the graph of the represents the x y i y z i on those on the levels. This is the 
And we have a map, we have a map, map of diagrams to the directory graph. And I'm making it a little more gentle because I think it's useful in order to do Yes, we have the map, which we will write in the homology. So, say it's three projects, an object here, and then we want to put here. Given such a thing, what we would like is to produce the category. There's going to be an R feature for the unit. So, we have the forms to be of the R features. And with the counter. And of course, I should have a map from zero, the diagram of this section. So, associating the three identity, of course, I have a diagram which is very good to And if I apply T everywhere, the diagram of this section should come in Apply T everywhere. So I hope the idea is clear. The idea is that you start with the diagram and then you know that for every vertex of the diagram, I have a certain and then you know that for every vertex of the diagram, I have a certain you have, you have a map uh, whenever you have an edge in the diagram. The graph, you have a map of the vector, a linear, Q linear map of the vector spaces, or R linear map, it's an R module. And from this, I want to construct a certain category which will be the smallest category in some sense, so that's the universal property. 
It will be the smallest category where all these morphisms will actually live. Okay. And let me explain why we want to do this from Grothendieck's point of view. So, this is essentially a question which was maybe posed indirectly or directly by Grothendieck. Can we construct such a web G category? Okay. That is the original question. Now, we know that not every morphism of singular cohomology comes from a morphism of varieties. Therefore, we cannot expect that the answer to whatever we want is R mod itself. Whatever we want is a smaller category than R mod. Okay. And the question is how do I determine that category? Once I now the other part of it was done by people like Kratendik. thing okay of course uh, in this paper he basically used that idea that he knew that so Savitra Rivano's paper is sometime in 71 72 or maybe 69 late 60s early 70s and Noli said oh I know I know that this result is true and now I know how to prove it also and he gave a different proof essentially of the same result how to construct the group. So, the idea of constructing the group is, is basically through a, a general technique which is to say that if certain category of modules has some tensor product and so on, then it has a group structure. So, how does one construct it? There are many expositions of this, we will do one of them at some later stage. But today what I want to talk about is this construction, how do I construct this category. So, Suppose I didn't want it to be an abelian category, then it's relatively easy. What do I have to do? I just have to take all the morphisms, all the arrows, and I have to complete them. Wherever I have two arrows when following the other, I will declare a new morphism. And so I'll get all the morphisms. But I want it to be an abelian category. So there's some more work before. Okay. Okay. So let's start by the simplest case where D is just a point. So, that means essentially we are asking that we have a single object E, sorry, not E, I don't want to do it, use my notation data. P of V is an R module, single point between V, okay, and no morphism. So, the simplest possible category, there is only identity morphism, nothing else. So, in this case, what is, what do we expect to be the category C of V? So, th so, there are no restrictions because you have not put any morphisms except identity. So, the idea here is that you can, you can consider, you note that endomorphisms of E of P are over R of course, so I won't uh, E of P, so again it's not managing it too well. <laughs> so, I want to say that the answer is modules over this. Okay. Note that P V is an R module. So, end R, R is commutative. Therefore, endomorphisms of P V is an R algebra. Okay. So, this is an R algebra. And I would like to say that given any uh, given any R endomorphism of T V module, I would like to construct and so I would like to in other words what I would like is a functor from N over R of T V. 
mod to our mod. And this is where, of course, we will use various things that we have hypothesized that we TV is finitely generated as an R module, otherwise you won't get it. Right? So, <clears throat> so let's take the simplest case again that uh, TV is a free module. No, CDP is this. See, we cannot expect anything except what is in the image. Okay, and things which are generated by it. So, so suppose I look at TV and take a take a homomorphism from uh, TV to itself, which is R linear. Then the kernel and co-kernel should also be there. These are all modules for n of TV. Okay. So, TV is a is a finitely generated R module. Yeah, single R module. And That's what you would think, correct? But on the other hand, I want to make something which is universal for morphisms for to uh, from R modules. So I want it to be R linear. Okay. So, so the, the problem is, I mean, for example, if I look at morphisms from TV to itself, which are R linear, then the kernel co-kernel will be objects there. So. So first of all, there is such a functor, and then we would like to say that this is universal. Okay. So first of all, let's see why there is such a functor. Is there such a functor first of all? Okay. Yeah, so I mean you could take that point of view that there is there is only TV and direct sums of TV to itself, okay, but my point is that that is for R linear categories that is not universal. Anyway, we will we'll see, let us let us see that there is such a functor, once you know there is such a functor then you are, so of course if I take TV direct sum TV these are objects here, but if you can produce more objects then those more objects will also be there. That's that's the idea. So uh, yeah, uh, of course I should I should also say show that. In other words, what I'm claiming is that if you well, okay, let let's let's just try to see the idea here. So the idea is that if T V was free, Then this is just a matrix, right? So then in it's just n cross n matrices over R. Okay. <coughs> and of course we have a natural functor. Given a module over M and R, we just restrict to the diagonal, we get a module over R. So there's a natural functor. In general, of course, yeah, so if you have an R algebra, you have such a function. Okay. So the question is, why should I expect something? Okay, so what do I want to do? I want to, I want to expand this category to allow some morphisms here. So let's start with one morphism. Suppose there is one more morphism. Oh, I do not need it. <laughs> I was going to look for the areas of okay. so so suppose I have TV to TV. What do I want to do? Then instead of this, I would like to look at the ring of endomorphisms of TV okay, which commute. G commutes with it.
So let me call it M at this time, change notation from the previous time. M for morphisms. Right. Because I want morphism to be linear for this. So, more generally, if I have a collection of morphisms, F1, F2, F, K, finitely many morphisms, then I want morphisms which commute with all of them, right? M1, M2, M, so I again want to have MR. Okay. So, so, what I want is therefore to look at end of TV and I have a map from this to End of the which is G goes to G composed with M EM minus EM composed with. And I want to take E of and I want to take E sub B to be one of this. So E sub B is is a subring. So the subring of n of n. And of course R is contained there because by assumption R is all these morphisms are R linear. So that is subring. And now I want to say that E B mod to natural. Except that E B is now a non commutative ring. One has to be a little careful. So you, you take here, when you take this notation, let's take left modulus or something like that. And I want to say that this is the universal construction for this particular case. And now you can go one more step. Suppose I had B has finitely many vertices. Then what will you do? You can take, you can define a single guy which is P of B i. There are two ways. One is, of course, you can take end of P V i for each i over i. There is some over i. And go to direct sum. Home from the left point of this. The same way. So I went from one to this. Where <coughs> Maybe the same index should not be used for the majority. So, given any any morphism, given a tuple here fi, what will it go to? For each j, I have to define what it is. So, for each j, I will take the the morphism p f i composed with first apply the left one. So, p sorry. PMI PMJ composed with F at left of MJ minus F at right of MJ composed with 
this is an element in J and I want to take the kernel, so that is kernel of this. And define this to be mm -hmm. the other alternative which may look simpler is to replace this by the direct sum of PVIs, the single object as I have found one place. But now not only will I look at the morphisms, I will do the same construction as the previous one, but in addition to M1, M2, MS, I will take the projections into the individual factors, phi1, phi2, phi1. So that these objects also should exist. Right? If I take the direct sum and if I don't take the projections, then I don't guarantee that these objects exist. Now each mi is a morphism, it is to be thought of as a morphism which is going from the some lm i to rmi, right? zero everywhere except out here there is a single morphism, you know the matrix which has just one entry. So this maybe it should put tilde here. If I want to think of it as an endomorphism of this. So there are two ways of doing it, but the idea is the same. So this should be a single object. And then now it's a single object. We have done it earlier how to define the ring and we have got a module instead. Okay, so this is the, the basic idea of how to go about constructing it for where the diagram is finite. But first of all, we have not proved that this is universal. Okay, so, so to prove that it's universal, we need to do more work. But in any case, this is the key idea. This is not a very okay, I'll go back. Previous. Okay, so, so what I want to emphasize is that we, we not only want this, we have this functor, we would like this to be universal also. Okay, so, so we not only want to have this functor, but we want it to be universal. Also, yeah, maybe it's maybe it's obvious. Uh, the way I have done it here in my notes, I seem to have done a lot of work in order to prove this is the function taking this C over here. Why I need to more work on this side. Okay, so there are two points, yeah, in order to prove that this is functorial, uh, so, so in order to prove that it is functorial, there are two points which need to be done. First is that if we actually have a module, right, uh, as have an R algebra, then, so let me see. So, E and R algebra, finally, we can write R algebra. 
Oh, I should have said, uh, I think just as a remark, that saying that E is finitely generated is where we have used that R as my theory. Because I think this remark is that I forgot to say this. We are looking at it at the kernel of some map from an R module, right? And in the and we are defining some map that right? some over all modules. So the kernel of this is EV. And this is this is of course these are finitely generated being finitely generated. And the kernel is finitely generated in R algebra because R is made. So E is a finitely generated R algebra and given So we have this natural functor. Uh, in order to prove that the construction is universal, we actually would need to show that there is a way to recover this picture in the way in which we are doing it. That means in terms of diagram. That means I should be able to write a certain diagram here, B, okay, and such that if I, which has a natural element here, so to speak. And such that if I try to extend this in the way in which we are trying to extend it, we get back E. Okay. So at least in the finite case, we want to make sure that our construction is can be can be reversed in some sense. And uh, the idea is simply to take uh, take take E itself as an e left E module, right? What would you do? So you would like to say that. Somehow there is a certain diagram. What will that diagram be? Will be E itself considered as a module. So let L be E as a left E module. Okay. And what are the if I look at end so this is where, yeah, so maybe it helps to think in terms of matrix algebras. So now if I look at N L as an R module, how do I determine in some sense E inside it? Okay. So we know that, so let's take the, the suppose E1, E2, En are the generators of it. Sorry, and generated over R, right? So finitely generated R module. So it is E1, E2, EM are the generators over R. These are elements of L. And and if I look at each of these endomorphisms. And take right multiplication by that. Right? So then the kernel of this is going to be exactly E as left multiplication. Right? So because they generate L E, sorry, it should be E as an R module, every right multiplication is a linear combination of these. So if I know that something commutes with all of them, then it commutes with all the left multiplication, right multiplication, then it has to be the left multiplication value. Okay. So, so you, you would look at E as this kernel. So that's, I think that's one point which needs to be worked out. Right. The finite system of generators. <coughs> So, 
So the diagram which we want is that we are going to take L and write multiplication by each of the EIs. Okay, this diagram is the diagram associated with it. And I want to say that E of this diagram is E. So, so if I take, so this is To, to see that this this diagram commutes. So I don't know if I want to do this calculation. You can see the nodes which I have referred to and you can see this. So the idea is very straightforward. After this, they are just a straightforward calculation to prove this. Okay. So this is point number one. Right? The second point is more tricky. What we would like to do Is that more generally if A is an abelian category, R linear abelian category, and you have a functor R mod, which is R linear functor. That means, what does that mean? That means R linear abelian category means the home objects are R modules and when we are saying that this, there is a functor like this, that means from home homomorphisms here to home homomorphisms here, there is a, a set map, but that set map should be R linear. Okay, so, so it's a map of R modules, so you can ask that it will be R linear. So an R linear functor. Then what we would like to say is given an object, so we want to now see that if you apply D to this, then right, if you just take the underlying diagram, you should recover it. Okay. So, so that means given, given an object here, X an object. And given R module M and R module. We would like to show that there is some some object like home and X, so to speak R. And M points of X. Finally, then. Are objects of A. Okay, so, so we would like to show that we can construct. So, I mean, this tensor part is actually not required right away. It's going to be required when we construct tensor products. But the home part, you can see that we need it in order to make the construction, right? Because our uh, our functor was our modules and everything was constructed using this home. So, we would like to construct something like home M X and M tensor X, okay, in this category, which is which are objects of A. So, given an R linear abelian category, you would like to, for a finitely generated R module, you would like to talk about home R, MX, and M tensor 
x okay, four x is equal to the difference is zero. But this idea is relatively straightforward once you uh, once you recognize something which is I should have said it earlier but I cheated okay and that is we are not looking at R mod actual category we are going to take a so to speak small representative. I mean, this is the usual set theory problem, so we don't want to get into those problems. So, how do we get? Uh, so, what you want is you want a category equivalent to R mod, which doesn't have too many objects. Otherwise, and similarly, for you will want to do this only for A small, right? Otherwise, that theorem which I wrote will, will actually have some set theoretic issues. So, this is to avoid set theoretic issues. And what is what is a small representative of R mod? How do I how do I take every module and represent it by something small? And the idea is simply that since M is finitely generated, you can write it as a quotient of You can write an exact sequence like this, and therefore you can replace M by uh, struggling for notation uh, from A and the rest of it. It's a module, it's a matrix associated with M. Okay. And of course, there may be many choices of A and B. A and B are finite, A and B are polygonal. And of course, there may be many choices, but your fundamental theorem, which you have studied in standard homological algebra, says that if I have a morphism like this, and if I have something like this, then this can be lifted. Okay. And therefore, for me, morphisms will be commutative diagrams, except that you have to worry about. The fact that they are only up, they are to be considered equal if they are up to moment of okay. so, so the idea is that uh, R mod objects are uh, <coughs> let me just check. Then this part of the be tricky. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Objects are Objects are so the two matrices A is a matrix, A is an A by B matrix. And morphisms are omitted diagrams and where this last map is only defined up to homotopy. So, what do I, what do I want exactly? I want it is an element of the quotient space of A. Turned by image. So, there is maybe some notation in the top. A 
and also write a service suitable form of the class here. So it's a connected diagram of course. I just I I leave this aside. Uh, I, uh, I think we we need this difference, right? Yeah. Uh, we diagram to commute, and uh, we want to go more go. A M N So I have written out something here which uh, looks complicated. Okay, anyway, so let me let me come back to that later. You want to write a suitable R module here. Some quotient. So as to make it an equivalence, otherwise certain things will go to zero. Okay, that's it. That's the main thing. I mean, of course, you need this diagram to commute, but you also need to go modulo something in order that the thing is faithful. Going to be things. Okay. Why do you want to do this? Now the idea is you can do m tensor x. You just tensor everything with x. Put n dual you can take with x. So you have the x is an object of A of the category A, which is R linear, and you can just apply uh, the A here. In the case, in fact, in our cases, you can you can even assume this uh, because R is going to be either a vector space. In vector spaces, there's nothing to check. Over Z, there's something to check. So, so X is an A, you can take home from this to X, this diagram to X. Or you can take X tensor this way. So, so that allows you to see that you will get a natural function. Okay, so this allows you to create a functor from okay so so what this allows you to do is to is to show that uh, the construction which you are doing for finite modules is universal okay in the sense of if there is a fun if there is a map like this to a right then by construction you can associate now a functor like this okay because of what we just did because given Given any M, we can given any R module, you can associate the, the corresponding module here. Okay, and so you can. So this this is what allows you in the case of finitely generated modules to to complete the diagram. Now it's only a matter of uh, if D is not finite. Okay, if D is not finite, we will construct E for each finite diagram and take an inverse limit as long as you have, you have somewhat simple exercise to prove that if you make a diagram bigger there is a natural factor in, in one direction. If a finite diagram you make a finite diagram and replace it by a larger finite diagram then you will get a small under a different ring okay and there will be a homomorphism of rings and the diagram will come out and this is relatively straightforward right. So if we try and some other finite diagram and you have this this is ED and there is an ED prime and so on. So, 
So that is relatively straightforward. So, so, so once you have done it for a finite diagram, you just have to take an inverse limit over all finite diagrams. So rest is inverse limit. Inverse, because if you take a so so somewhere I should have you know, E B yeah. the, the diagram the way I've written it is wrong, sorry. It is an inverse limit. So let me write it correctly. So B is contained in one is contained in the Inverse. Ah, maybe I So, E, B1, everything which is B2 linear will be automatically B1 linear. So, there will be a function like this. So, there is some, something which that should be a function. So, this is right. This composite is the same as this. I mean, which is what one should expect because you are in some sense you are shrinking the morphisms, right? You are taking the more the more morphisms you have in. I mean, so it, it's in one way it's a little bit complicated because of course D two could have more vertices than D one, but you when D two has just more morphisms than D one, which is what we usually want. So you want to then the number of endomorphisms which will be there will be smaller. So, B, so EB1 will be uh, in some sense bigger, right? And therefore, the EB2 will be a sub of EB1. Okay, so <clears throat> so that's that's what you want to do. We just want to uh, take take a take a limit over over all these constructions. Okay, so we'll take that the maybe I'm making a mistake. Am I making a mistake? Are you saying you're saying that this is like a yeah, should I check this? B1 maps to B2. If you take a bigger category, we have a different. Okay, let me, let me not say it right now. I will make some mistake. I will, next time, <laughs> class, I, okay. So, so basically, that's a limiting. I mean, all I want to say is there's a limiting construction and the universality of. The construction will follow from the universality in the finite case. Okay, so so that's the that's roughly the idea of the construction. The how does one go about getting the group structure? Uh, the idea is, as I said, to talk about tensor products. So I don't know. Should we? So we are at one and a half or five five minutes. But that's not enough to talk about tensor products. 
So maybe we will postpone that to the next day. Okay. Are there any questions or is there a question? If not, uh, so I would I whatever I've been lecturing. This is in uh, a certain is is in one of the sections of these notes uh, on body motives. So I can I can I can share the PDF file maybe of the two uh, two sections which uh, the one is uh, this module business. I may be related with R modules, the, the small category. And uh, second is on Nori's construction of diagrams. Both of these I have some notes which I have put on AMS open notes. So this is contained in AMS open notes. But I can share the file. And I would uh, request people to read them carefully and point out errors and so on because I'm not so sure that I, this was done three years ago, four years ago, so three years ago. So maybe some errors. Anyone stop. Um, so with this we end today's session. Let's thank the speaker. Uh, the next lecture would be on the next Saturday as usual. See you all then next week.